Hello everyone and welcome to another video. How's everyone doing and how was your weekend? Today I'm happy to announce that I found a good AD carry finally. And I must say, I'm very fond of Jin players because for some reason, most Jin players are good. It's rare to see a bad Jin player. In this game I decided to focus my early gains on ganking the bot side, while completely ignoring the blue buff side. Also, a funny thing happened during champ select. Top laner took a long time to pick a champion and then swapped with the last pick. I suggested, hey can you pick Mordekaiser? He should be good into their composition. The guy responded, yeah I'm a Mordekaiser main. And it was a nice bonding moment. That pick allowed us to focus on one lane. I suggested that because as a jungler it's tough to play against Mordekaiser because he can lock you out of a fight for 7 seconds, which is a lot of time. Even if he loses the duel he can just use Zhonya's. Most Mordekaisers these days build off tank, making them hard to kill while also preventing you from being killed, leading to a stalemate. So yeah, picking Mordekaiser into their composition, especially against Hecarim with the recent changes, made a huge difference. Now back to our strategy. In this game I thought, hmm, maybe we should try something different. While helping the team later was an option, the best solution was to camp the bot side. My only concern was that we have a Sona, and when it comes to Sona players, this might sound a bit sexist, but many Sona mains are passive, which sometimes aligns with how female players tend to approach support roles. So yeah, whenever I ganked, there wasn't much aggression from their bot side. We managed to get some ganks off and started building a lead. Regarding my own playstyle, I think I improved a bit in playing Volibear jungle. You might wonder, are you still looking to improve? And the answer is yes. As a jungler, you always need to be precise in your decision making. Even if you're confident in your skills, there's always room to refine your choices, like having foresight. Of course, there's a margin of error, but the better you get, the fewer mistakes you make. For example, people often think you need to innovate constantly to succeed, but that's a misconception. The rule is, if something works, keep doing it until it stops working. Then, find the next thing that works and repeat. In League of Legends, this concept applies to camping. Not just camping one lane, but how you gank. If your first gank doesn't work, don't leave. Just stay hidden and try again. The downside is, if the person you're ganking is a good player, they'll adapt and you'll lose value. But if they're an average or below average player, repeating the same move will generate gold for you and your allies. This strategy works well for the support side, but it requires some setup and mistakes from the enemy. For example, if they have an aggressive support like Leona or Alistar, it can be very effective. However, it doesn't work as well with champions like Raken, who can easily engage and then retreat, healing and shielding their ally. So yeah, Raken is quite obnoxious. It also doesn't work well with Pike, where you need some hard crowd control to make it work. But against most typical bot lanes, camping one lane can generate a lot of gold for your bot side, which helps you establish control over dragons. Unlike top lane, where camping sets you up for Baron and split push strategies, focusing on the bot lane sets you up for drakes, mid game, and more skirmishes for vision. If you're aiming to give your ADC a big advantage, you'll likely shift your focus to the mid lane later. It may sound odd, but prioritizing the bot lane early allows you to eventually move your mid laner to the bot side and let the ADC take over mid. Afterward, you focus on getting your ADC core items, and by then, you'll likely secure the inhibitor. Of course, this is all theoretical until the enemy team starts playing Aram, and your team struggles to respond, leading to a slow loss. But your mindset should be focused on what you want the mid-game and late-game to look like. The early game is like your draft as a jungler. You need to ask yourself, should I trust this teammate? Should I help this lane? Should I help myself? Should I counter jungle? Will I regret it? By the end of the early game and the start of the mid game, you should already know if the game is a win or a loss. Of course, if it is a loss, then you should go for innovation to make a miracle out of that game. Now, if you're wondering, we died a lot against Lux, and the reason for that is the way I kept camping one lane. While it helped us gain a gold lead, it left us behind in experience. You might know by now that leveling up is a selfish process. For example, in this game, Hecarim was often ahead of me in level and health. One level can be equivalent to around 300 to 1000 gold, depending on the spells and the stats you get from leveling up, which always gives a significant advantage in dueling and applying pressure. By focusing on the bot side, I enabled them to gain a huge lead, sacrificing some of my own experience. 
However, if your bot site is bad, it's like pouring water into sand. Your efforts go to waste. Every time I camped the bot side, Lux was there to kill me and reclaim some of the advantages we had established. Of course, getting magic resist helps, which is why we went for a simple yet effective build. The build I used is reminiscent of Volibear's original form after the rework. Iceborne Gauntlet, Spirit Visage, with Press the Attack. This build is Volibear's signature. It doesn't die, always works, and likely always will. The concept behind this build is straightforward. You bite someone, slow them, and keep biting. It's your typical bear attack experience. Imagine running into a bear in the forest. It slows you, keeps biting, and doesn't stop until you're dead. Slow, painful, and the way a bear attacks. I don't always like this build, but against their composition, it was highly rewarding. They had Hecarim, Atrox, and Lux, so the moment you slow them, you cripple them for the entire fight. You can always switch focus and slow someone else because Sheen procs every two seconds, allowing for continuous pressure. I was considering spicing up the build by adding Navori as my third item. After some research, I discovered that Navori as a third item has the highest win rate for Volibear, regardless of runes or other items. It fundamentally improves Volibear's build path. My only concern was that against Hecarim's phase rush playstyle, it felt like I wasn't doing enough to carry no matter how good our ADC was. We were slightly winning, but it was still difficult because Hecarim could burst our Jinnus from behind figuratively and literally. Despite this, I managed to catch Lux out of position multiple times. The top side was a close match, with a one-for-one -one trade whenever someone had their summoners. It felt like a battle of summoner spells. Whoever used them better got the kill. In mid, we had a toxic Tristana player. He was constantly complaining, gank me, gank me, I can kill Lux, always playing aggressively and pushing. Hecarim managed to get a lot of kills from that player. But the more toxic our allies, the more I ignored them. I even suggested he seek help. Maybe visit an asylum and get some medication or electric shock therapy to stop the toxic behavior. Of course, I didn't say any of this because I'm chat restricted. This was all an internal monologue, expressed through complete indifference to his lane. Well, of course, in every game, there's a plot twist. I don't know how Riot managed to do this after 10 years of experimenting, but no matter how fed you are or how far ahead you get, there's always a moment in the late game where the tide shifts, either in your favor or against you. Even if you reach the late game with no inhibitors left, you still have a chance to win. In this situation, we messed up our focus so badly that the enemy team won the team fight. It was then that I realized something important. We shouldn't have been team fighting at all against their composition. If you're wondering why, it's because Jin who had the most gold in the game was built to be an assassin. He doesn't perform well in prolonged team fights, but excels in small skirmishes and awkward situations when positioned correctly. Oddly enough, after that point, even the toxic Tristana player lost faith in the team and stopped grouping, opting to split push bot side instead. Surprisingly, this turned out to be a good thing for us. At this stage, I could simply position myself directly on top of Jin, using my champion's larger hitbox to absorb skill shots and focus even by accident. So we switched up our strategy and began playing a 1-3-1 setup, hoping the enemy would lose patience and engage us. Our goal wasn't to win the team fight, but to stall them long enough for Tristana to take the inhibitor. We all know that Tristana is a problem when left unchecked, especially with her ability to proc demolition every few seconds, depending on the cooldown. After that initial loss, our team adapted to their team fight threats, which allowed us to go from winning to losing, and then back to winning again. This game was a great example that League of Legends is still a good game when you're matched with other players who aren't necessarily great or terrible, but just people looking to enjoy the game without any hidden agendas or unnecessary personal issues. Well, of course, this game also requires a lot of patience. It takes time to be patient, considerate, and hopeful that things will turn in your favor. For example, in this match, when there was nothing left on the map, no drakes or barons, the enemy team decided to kill one of our key allies, Mordekaiser. Since we were left alone in a lane, we could have simply pushed for the win. Often, I find my team instinctively rushing to help an ally when we could have just pushed the lane, taken a tower or inhibitor, and made the exchange worthwhile for both teams while keeping the pressure in our favor. But not everyone thinks that way in these situations. In this case, we pushed for the win. And since any encounter with Mordekaiser would be in our favor, given that team fights typically last about five seconds on average, while Mordekaiser can extend that to at least seven seconds. 
we had the opportunity to take a tower and inhibitor. If you have this advantage, you should always use it to secure a power play. So, with that push, we managed to secure not one but two inhibitors, making the enemy team regret their decision and allowing us to secure the game after a series of exchanges. As usual, my dear friends, this marks the last play of the game. Make sure to subscribe, leave a comment, and let me know how your climb with Volibear is going, especially since we have only about one month left before the end of the season. If you're new to the channel, I hope you enjoyed this video. Until next time, take care everyone, and peace.